THM The Show presents me, Pablo Gunner, and my guests right here from the podcast that wouldn't die. What's up? This is Kevin. And this is Aaron. We're here to talk nerdy to me. We're going to talk nerdy to each other about nerdy things, of course. The Last of Us HBO show. But you have seen The Last of Us show, right? Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Okay. And that was an option because it was like, I didn't really even know anything about it until TikTok blew up with Pedro Pascal. So then when that was an option to come in, I'm like, all right, let's go check it out. Nine episodes. Why not? I kept calling it This Is Us, though. That's, what I, that's why I never wanted to see it. And then you're like, you know, it's a zombie. I'm like, it's, it's This Is Us. The zombies come and decimate the family. With Mandy Moore. Yeah. <laughs> She's the first to go. <laughs> <laughs> What was it? It was a video game first. Right. Did you know that, Aaron? I believe my students told me that, but not until after I'd watched the series. But then the mushroom-headed people seem vaguely familiar. <laughs> so. Did either of you play the game? I'm assuming no, but I don't want to assume. Kevin plays things. I, I play things, but <laughs> I, I think... <laughs> that sounded bad. <laughs> but I, I think the... Uh, Last of Us, it was only available, what, on PlayStation 4 and 5 or something like that? I, the original was put out on 3, but I know they, I know there was a remaster on 4, and then I think they put out a, like, remastered version, so, like, it plays as good as Part 2 coming out. So, and I think they did that specifically for the show, so that people could go, like, okay, now, now play it on your PS5 before you see the show. So you can complain about the show. <laughs> right. Or or for me, in my case, watching the show makes me want to get the remaster so that I can play it again just to refresh and play it with like play it better, essentially, you know. And the DLC, because like that there's that episode where the best friend slash girlfriend got infected right. and I'd never played that so I didn't know how that was going to play out spoiler alert and so but, I, but that's the thing is I, I don't know how that's going to play out in the game though right because it's still different like it's not hugely different and that's the difference between like this show and other shows that are based off video games is right. this one stuck really close or they just added more like they've made slight changes that really were smarter like they changed the fungus the fungus is different but by the way I have to talk about the fungus they're like hey there's no resist. There's nothing you can do if you get a fungus. Um, I can go get an antifungal from CVS right now for my athlete's foot. Okay, are you telling me there's nothing we can do if there's a, if there's some fungus? I don't know. It's I, I heard that's totally ineffective. Now you just have to pour it in your brain, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> They said that, that, that stuff you buy at CVS, though, just kind of maintains your level. It doesn't really get rid of it. Are you being serious right now? I'm, I'm serious. Any fungal oh, medication is really hard on the body because it, you know, your liver has to process it. Like toe fungus. Have you ever had, you know, any you know, athlete's foot? Am I crazy? I thought athlete's foot was the crap men got between their toes. But that's a fungus, right? It is a fungus, but you can treat that don't and, know and, this, and, and you way. knock it back. But if you're if you're dealing with like the toenail fungus, people go get their toenails removed because they get thick. And giant, and you, you you can't do anything. Oh, you can pour all the tea tree oil you want, but as far as The Last of Us, we're going to put it in your noggin? What are you going to do with that? I'm shooting up tea tree oil. You might as well. I mean, at that stage of the game, I mean, what do you got to lose? <laughs> I mean, I thought it was a really clever idea, and mushrooms are all crazy now. Everything is mushrooms right now. You got to drink your mushroom coffee. Everybody wants a microdose psilocybin. Mushrooms are everything, everywhere right now. So I thought this was perfect. <laughs> to kill that, to kill that fad. <laughs> so it's something else to worry about, basically. Uh, but I think they, they were freaky as hell, though, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, but they made a comeback with the Super Mario movie because that's exploded. So now mushrooms are back in. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. It all comes it's to the out. dark side of Mario Brothers. It's the stuff you don't see. Once they go down the little tunnel, this is what's really going down. <laughs> I actually, I heard a theory too that the mushrooms that grow and give an extra life or whatever are actually fungus that grows from the corpses of the other Marios. Oh, damn. Which is like... That took a dark turn. Yeah, I'm like, why would you do... Why would you 
make us think that or want that. Like that's that's so messed up. Like the mushroom all of a sudden turns up and you just see the face underneath it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, but the friendly mushrooms, now we're talking about Super Mario Brothers, there's friendly mushrooms, but there's also the Goombas, the the racially insensitive nickname for the evil mushrooms that kind of walk around. (laughs) The the Jersey Shore mushrooms. Oh, no. Okay. Here it comes. (laughs) With this show, I felt like they changed the, the fungus. Like, yeah, it's smarter because they did more research and they're like, oh, yeah, the tendrils and it reaches and the communication and stuff. That's why they did it. But I also feel like they did it because in the game, you always put on a mask. Like, anywhere there's fungus and there's spores... You put on your gas mask, and then you can't see. You can't. Well, I mean, obviously, you're the, their character, but you can't see their faces. So then it would be like that the whole way through, and and the characters' right. faces would be covered and stuff. But that doesn't seem. To, what's funny is that doesn't seem to be a problem for Mandalorian, though. You know what I mean? Like they go, well, we don't care. This is the way. <laughs> like, right. They'll make this exception for The Last of Us, but then they're like, nope, we're gonna stick hardcore for Star Wars, like to make it more legit. I mean, I thought about that. I mean, you're talking about black molded houses. They're, right. they're covered up nothing. All I can think of was spores. Because <laughs> that and that's the video game. The video I mean, it's spores. Um, and I actually after watching The Last of Us, I went on in like a deep dive of, I think it's, what is it, the ants or whatever? Who gets yes, like a, a fungus the on them? Yeah. Right? We're going deep on this. The way they do it is they the spores hit them and they just kind of crawl like a zombie to a place where it's well lit and then just kind of plant themselves. Like they, their manacles grab onto something and then the, the mushroom or whatever comes out of their back and then sprays the spores to get more ants. So it's, it's all based on fact. It's, it's science. It's all based on facts. This is science. This is science. Right. That's why I thought they were most at risk when they were in the forest. Because it's I'm like, where do I see fungus the most? Uh-huh. And I'm like, it's in, you know, those grassy, it's in the forest. It's in those kinds of places. And I'm like, why are they not, like, being more protective out in the forest? Which is funny because in that same episode, they break glass in the hallway so that if anybody sneaks up on them, they'll hear it. Right. But, and I was thinking the exact same thing. I was like, why don't they put something crunchy around them so in the forest they'll hear if any of those, I, I don't know what to, uh. Because the forest is crunchy. The fungal people, yeah. <laughs> but I, I mean, <laughs> right. I mean, but then that nothing happened and then it happened later was what right. they did in that same episode. So I just thought it was kind of funny. It's like, you did it for that later, but you didn't do it earlier. They really didn't do anything, did they, when they were in the woods? They were like, yeah. let's lay out here under the stars and get killed why by zombies. Why don't you fucking stay there? Just, why don't you just fucking stay there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But was like, why don't they just stay with that old couple and like, hey, folks, you're going to get old and you're going to need some help. We're just staying here. Screw this. Yeah. Screw <laughs> Well, they were trying to deliver. Uh, God. Ellie. Ellie. They were trying Ellie. to deliver Ellie because she's got the, she's got the cure. Right, basic uh, basic point A to point B video game setup. Because otherwise, they could have stayed at uh, Nick Offerman's like compound if they didn't really care. I mean, he had all well, the stuff all set. Until the go. fluid just dripped down from the ceiling, I guess. <laughs> Are you talking about from their corpses? Oh, well, well, yeah, you'd have to fumigate, obviously, but yes. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Which, uh, I think that's the, the the episode fans were most split on because they got a, they got rid of, in the video game, there's that interaction between right. Bill and the characters. And, and like I said, it's been a long time. It's been 2000. I played this when it came out. So it's been a long time. So I was like, all I remember is that Bill was a real a-hole and he was paranoid and right. he ended up giving him a vehicle and and that was it and like he ended up like doing like this last stand type thing for them we didn't get that we missed that in exchange for this love story they you've seen it in other things shows that are specifically about that but when they throw it in there to like oh this is an apocalypse you know video game thing and i think even the i think i've seen clips of the video game where they're like there was a mention of his partner and it was uh frank but it but they didn't go in depth on it right and i feel like that letter that was in the show like that's what mainly went in depth on it right there so what did you think about that episode well first of all he was simply recreating his character from parks and rec <laughs> that's all i 
kept thinking about that this is like five years after he's retired yeah. from Pawnee, Indiana, and now he's set up in his bunker. I thought the relationship at the beginning seemed really contrived and awkward. I don't feel like there was any chemistry. But by the end, I was kind of like rooting for him. Your soul is hardened dead, is dead inside. I'm, I'm telling you. no chemistry at the beginning. Well, at the end, it was supposed to be awkward. awkward. It was supposed to be like kind of an awkward moment. Well, it well was trust like... me, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. That episode, now you could argue, is like, why are we focusing an entire episode on this couple that we have never really seen before? I don't know anything the about. other episodes like that, because it's like the super random, we're going to totally feature an entire, only nine episodes, and the whole one is going to be just on that. So I just assumed it was going to be this this thing all the way through, where you're with them, and this is what's going on over here. But so, no. I mean, that's that's a fair criticism. That's a fair criticism. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I was into it. I was into it as it progressed. By the end, I was into it. I was Absolutely. all scary. I mean, <laughs> even though I knew, because the TikTok was all full of spoilers before I even knew I was going to watch this. So yeah. I already knew. And I was still teary. It was still sad. It was, it was sweet and sad and terrible. And <laughs> you, you don't see that on not. Walking Dead, really. I gotta be honest. I never <laughs> cried during The Walking Dead. That was the worst. I only cried. Why hadn't they killed Carl yet? That That's made all me I cry. cried about. They didn't kill him soon enough. Exactly. God damn it! All those little kids gotta go. <laughs> and, I, and I think I read somewhere. Kind of hardcore. No, no. He no, never no, gave no. up. He never gave up. And then it was Fear the Walking Dead. And then it was, I, I don't know. I watched Fear one the season. Walking Dead. I watched one season of Fear the Walking Dead, and they said, "How about two angsty teenagers?" And I said, "Double down. I'm out. I'm out. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Screw you, mom. I'm out of here. There are That's zombies like, outside. Your fucking ass outside. I'm leaving you for the zombies. God damn. Yeah. Sass back one more time. Walking Dead. How it, it's kind of gone off in its own way. I know. I didn't play the video game. Uh, I was gonna call it This Is Us. The Last of Us. <laughs> We're gonna call it This Is Us. <laughs> in, in, that, in game that was preferred." That's that is preferred. In the game, they go to Pittsburgh, where in uh, the show they go through Kansas City. Like that's that they're not strictly analogous. Like there, I, I know there are like there are different characters that occur in that whole Kansas City story that do not occur in the Pittsburgh story. If I'm not totally mistaken, right? Yeah, and that was when I started the show. I was like, oh, this is an extended version of the game because they're expanding, you know, the dialogue and all that stuff, you know, that you would do with the show. And right. then as the show progressed, I went, you know what? This is an ex this isn't an expansion. It's a it's actually a packed version because they cut out all the all the fighting right like all the gameplay aspects right they cut out because that's like a, that's a huge part of the game that's so, the game right so when you cut that out you're like wow this is actually going to be that's how you're able to do it in one in one season because the game is comprised of seasons right like it's it's done in in fourths in seasons and i was like the, and it seems so long oh i think they're going to do each season is a season and then right. And I was like, oh no, they're cutting out all the fighting. This they're definitely gonna be able to fit it in, and, and they do. And like you said, they changed certain things. I a lot of the things they didn't they didn't bother me like that episode. That didn't bother me. I do kind of wish that Bill would have uh, lived so that we still would have seen that interaction that we missed from mm -hmm. the game, and still seen like this last stand uh, thing going on too. But we kind of already saw that with Tess. The, but it's right. I, I feel like it was it, it's elevated though with him. You know, like with her, it, it wasn't as much. Because, like, he had a fortress built. She was just, like, they just had this one explosive and boom, that was it. So I feel like they still could have outdone themselves if they would have done it again. I feel like there is one, there's one complaint, though, that is, there really wasn't that many, the fungus. The clickers? Right? Yeah, the clickers. Yeah, there really wasn't that many of, of those people there. Right. They cut out, wait, at that point, they cut out too much of the gameplay from, from the show. Because when they did show up, I was terrified and it was super intense. And then after it was, after tests, it just seemed like it, 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 it left almost completely uh and even the end so i don't know for me it, it was weird because like i said i played the game and and i watched the show i was depressed as soon as the last episode started because oh man this is about to get super depressing and I, it just came upon me and they brought it though like so but what did you think about what joel did 
Because he made the choice for her, pretty much. I don't think this is new in storytelling or cinema. This is the English patient where he sells, gives the Nazis all the secrets just to try to save his 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 girlfriend in the cave. It's one of those things. Like I haven't seen this movie, but was it the knock at the cabin? So if me having to choose one of my family members is what is required to save the earth, then maybe it doesn't need to be saved. If I have to sacrifice this little baby to you guys, then fuck it. Right. If that's I mean, what it takes, you know? Because it's never I sacrifice myself. It's yeah. always sacrifice somebody who I love the most. Right. That's kind of what they go for. Now, I mean, it's, a, it's a, you're a parent. You're a parent. Take me. Absolutely. That'd be so Absolutely. much easier if you just go ahead and kill me. Thank you. No. Right. He and he can't tell her. He can't give no. her the choice. It has to because lie. then she'll take lie. it. Right. She she will say. I mean, theoretically, she may say, "F this, I'm out of here." But <laughs> theoretically, if she starts she, passing back. You might want to rethink all that. <laughs> like Fear the, the Walking old. Dead. Uh, <laughs> Yes, in Fear the Walking Dead, you'd volunteer your teenage children to be experts. <laughs> um, no, but you can't. You can't tell her because then she'll. But so you have to carry that weight. Hundred percent. You have to carry right. that burden that you could have saved humanity the- theoretically. In this There's situation. no guarantee. There's no guarantee. no guarantee. And quite frankly, why they had to like remove her whole brain? They couldn't take a, a scraping or something. I mean, no scrapings. On. They make it so final. Like, so we're not even going to try. We're just going to, like, scoop her with a melon ball. And that's going to be it. Not even not even make any attempt of something less horrifying. Because if they fuck up, there's nothing to go back to. Because they've killed her. Right. That's true. That's true. I One thing I, I noticed is that these, these video games are called survival horror, is the idea. So it is kind of... You know, I played a lot of Resident Evil back in the day, and it was that kind of thing where you're going down the long, long haul, and there are the zombies, and you got to kind yeah. of. There are elements of kind of action in those. Where this was much more, you know, it had action moments, but it was definitely more of a character study in my in my mind. You know what I mean? It's like you see the transformation of Joel being like this cold-blooded mercenary. And well, that's know. what makes him good. Yes. It's, it's the, the character, it's the motivation, it's the arcs and all of that. Otherwise, it's John Wick 4, and it's just, it's three hours long and two of those hours of him getting kicked down the stairs. So let me just say that. <laughs> and three lines of dialogue. Right. And three lines of dialogue. I still love John Wick 4, though. <laughs> <laughs> And with kids, it changes, right? When I played it, I didn't have kids. So, right. I, so I was really upset. I was like, you know what? Joel needs to die. He needs to, needs to come full circle. I want to see a part two just to see it come full circle. And then I had kids and then rewatching it or, or watching it instead of playing it. I couldn't make a different decision. Right. Now, if it was a different family member, you know, that's a different story. But, <laughs> it was you know, creepy Uncle creepy Leo. Uncle, like, creepy Uncle. <laughs> uh, a touchy McFeely. You know. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but having kids fucks you up. Having kids fucks you up. Before I had kids, uh, do I have to throw a bag full of someone else's children over the wall to the gators? Whatever. And now it's like, ah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it, it, it bothers me. It frankly offends me when they have children placed in these kinds of peril in horror movies. And I watch horror movies all the time. It's so ridiculous. I'm like, because I, I want them to be fun. And if you're putting like little children in peril, I'm like, whoa, 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 hang on. Time whoa, 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 that. whoa. For reals. Hey, Eli Roth, you got too far this time. <laughs> <laughs> Eli Roth. <laughs> so I, I do think, though, that Ellie, like right before they got into the city, she was like, hey, I'm willing to go all the way with this. So, so that's yep. also why he couldn't just be like, well, I'm just going to s- stop this. And then tell her, and then give her the choice, because she had already pretty much told him. So, I, the my biggest fault though is that that she knew he was lying, and he still lied. You know, that's my biggest problem is that sometimes you, know, you have to, even if you know someone's lying, and you kind of want it to be true, you just right. let yourself believe it's true. Just tell her, like it's already said and done. Like you can't change nah. anything. Like she'll hate you probably, but no, she'll she will run away and go back there. 
You got to double down on that. What? No. They were all dead, so I mean, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, was the surgery on herself. But, well, but I mean, the resistance is still around. It probably right. wasn't a secret, and people are probably going to be looking for her. Well, and here's here's something else that I literally just occurred to me. Like, I don't know, 15 years ago, there was this movie called Man on Fire with uh, Denzel Washington and, uh, what's her name, uh, Dakota Fanning. And it's kind of that similar thing where it's like, here's this old, withered, you know, assassin type, right? But his heart is dead, right? He, a lifetime of trauma has made his heart dead inside. And here's this shining child who's kind of taught him how to love again. It sounds totally cheesy, but that's the thing. It's like she she is, that's she what is, is. his child and his savior in a way. Yeah. He can't just mm -hmm. leave her to, to those devices. His job is to protect her at any cost. Absolutely. Overall, thoughts, feelings on the season? My God, I loved it so much. But I normally I lose control and I just watch it all in one day because I have no impulse control. But I, I knew I had to do because it was dark. So I, I like was doing two, no break, watch two the next day. I still knocked it out in a week, but uh, it wasn't all one one day with me just not blinking and my eyes are on fire. <laughs> well, we we watch a lot of zombie movies, honestly, on, on our show. So what I always have to tell people with these kind of movies is that. Other zombie movies you've seen that are full of viscera and entrails, that's not this movie. Really, it's not. I mean, it, it, it really turns people off that are not freaks like us. If you say zombie, well. Right, right. And that, that's not this. This movie really has a lot of heart. It, right. it truly does. Although I have to, have to add, we haven't mentioned the crazy preacher who's a cannibal and a pedo all rolled into one. So he, he's hitting all the bases. <laughs> cool. So, I always have to have one of those. <laughs> Sweet. People are bad. In a zombie apocalypse, people are worse than the zombies. So just understand that and you'll be fine. I mean, that's the way it is now. It's like we're so jaded with zombies these days that the, the zombies no longer are really frightening. Right. So now they got to double down with the real evil. I mean, zombies are these mindless creatures. The real evil, of course, it all comes back to us. Right. No, but I would I would absolutely recommend this. To, frankly, anybody, anybody I with a soul. I tried to our parents that, that they were not hearing it. <laughs> did you really? I did. This is good. It's really good. It is really good. I loved it too. Like I said, as the person who played the game and watched the show, the differences aren't huge. I'm glad that they stuck pretty close. I enjoyed it overall. I don't know about you, but. I'm interested and excited for season two, and they already said there's going to be more clickers. I anticipate I will be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, like we said, it was just such a perfect ending. It was, it was great. It truly was. I mean, there was that one moment where all the zombies are coming out of the ground, and there's that one, what's it, a bloater? Is that yeah. what they're called? Big old crazy oh, dude? Man. I'm like, that's a video game character if I've ever seen one. There's no question. <laughs> that's the big boss. I get it. That's yeah. Big boss. I can't that's wait. Classic. I can't wait. It is great. I'm, I'm not watching it again right now, frankly. Shoot. I've only watched it once, so I'll probably hit it again this summer. Oh. But the music was great. You got a little Depeche Mode. Then you have another uh, slower, quieter version. You got that great Linda Ronstadt song. Which yeah. I love that song so much. Yeah, there's there's a lot of cool stuff. I mean, there's the the brothers too. Like, oh yeah, that was that was so messed up? Even like that too. When I when I I was like I I forgot what had happened, and then as it crept closer, I was like. Oh no, this is going to go really bad. And it, like I said, it, it's even worse when you have kids. You go like, "Oh my god. No, I don't want I don't I don't I don't want to see this." But yeah, and 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 like you said with the pedo priest cannibal, his right-hand man was the guy that originally voiced Joel, the lady that voiced Ellie. She's the one that birthed Ellie. Right. So she brought her to life in two different ways. Well, that's so, cool. And, and they well, did, she was on Growing Pains, too, back in the late uh, 80s, by the way. Back in the day, yeah. <laughs> she was... They had Leo, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio on, and then they also, like, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant with a new baby. So that was when they were trying to... Keep the show going. Yeah, there whatever you, go. you see, like new babies or, or weird relatives that come to live with you. Or you're a, a, a dog, you know, the ratings are on their way down. Now, in the, la in the Last of Us, when he meets the 
father and they're living in that community. Did you guys get me like a Walking Dead vibes? Remember at one point they go into that utopian society, then you find out the big guy has his daughter who's a zombie chained in like the closet or something. And it all goes to shit as usual. Everything always goes to shit. As soon as you think you can breathe, then you find out all the people are something. Well, but if you rolled in, right? I was thinking about this. And why would you go to some place that when the snow melts, you're going to get all this mold growth? It seems like you should be in the middle of Arizona. Uh, no fair. moisture. That's no fair. fungus. The opposites, right? Like either super heat or super cold where it's like, because they move super slow or they can't really survive and thrive in the cold. So you'd have to stay in the cold all year round or stay in the super heat. Or, I used to live up at the Oregon border and I had a pair of leather mock they were in the back of my closet and I hadn't worn them for a while and I pulled them out and they were green. So <laughs> the green was growing right out of my lot. There were no clickers inside of my box. <laughs> were there clickers when you could have been if it was the, the last of us? I must have called This Is Us again. We're just gonna call it This Is Us. This is just us. throw away your old it shoes. Is it's, a, it's a message to us all, I think. <laughs> I think we actually, my wife and I, made that mistake too. And I was like, well, let's just call it This Is The Last Of Us. We'll meet in the middle. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the worst, the, the reveal of that town, the worst of it was that uh, that they're communist. Which, for some people, that's that that ended it for them. Like, they go, nope, I'm, I'm out. It's not I'll take my survive. chance with the clickers. Yeah. Right. So. I mean, every, every place... Every place they went to, they were trying out some form of government. We we're going to throw off one fascist government for oh, that's true. for the true. rebels who were as extreme. Every, I mean, of course, when people are terrified and panic, that's when all the extreme forms of government, you know. If there are zombies outside, you can be Just a tell me what to do. I, I'll live with it. Exactly. Just <laughs> tell me what to do. Yeah, that, that's how people see power when people get scared. Well, I, I want to say uh, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate for joining me on this on this little quest to talk nerdy. What what all do you do on your podcast? What do you talk about and cover and get into? We're the podcast that wouldn't die. We typically talk about horror and sci-fi films. Mostly horror. Twist. Mostly, okay. It's probably 80-20. Maybe, wouldn't you say? Horror to sci-fi? I mean, in we all honesty. It's more sophisticated to say we also review science fiction. We, we do. Okay. Our <laughs> next movie that we're going to talk about is The Last Starfighter. So we're trying to, to thread it in a little more if you haven't seen that lately. And we haven't either. So we're going to check that out for the first time in 30 years. Oh, you haven't seen that? I thought that no. would be a pure Kevin thing. It is a pure Kevin thing. No <laughs> question. We pick these movies. Oftentimes, they're movies from our youth as you might imagine and we try we tend to goof on it because we're trying to be kind of humorous but i think we're fairly respectful except for aaron maybe yeah i'm not respectful <laughs> you have to earn my respect and you're not earning it with some of these films that are coming out damn it <laughs> That's, that's How dare you? We have a good time. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, from from your title, I surmise that maybe like you've been doing this longer than anybody, and I go like, that's why it's the podcast that doesn't die. But if you cover horror, that makes more sense with your title. And two, it's like sci-fi. Like there are elements where there is like that sci-fi horror, like Alien and stuff right. like that, the Survivor sci-fi stuff. But back to our title, that was a good guess, but that's not why. <laughs> We, we used to have a YouTube series, the B-Movie Club, where we, it, we called it B-Movie, and maybe it started with B-Movies, then it was just random movies, and no one watched it. So, so we quit. We decided we have faces for podcasts, so it was recommended by a nephew, so we resurrected because we will not die. We just keep going. We just oh keep no, we have a, we have a new YouTube uh, simulcast. So you, if you if you're dying to see what we look like, here you go. Enjoy. You're welcome. Because really, it costs us nothing to just put it out there. How dare you? This is a work of art. Kevin's the editor. Okay, awesome. <laughs> yeah, Kelsey Aaron, nothing. <laughs> So, and then if your kids, uh, they, they sign off to use your likenesses, they can continue it on. Like, trust me, like Peter Mac Hedrum. That, that's the plan. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> that's the plan, yes. <laughs> Good Lord. Awesome. Uh, well, so where can we, everyone out there, find you? We're on Twitter. 
we're on Facebook. We've been doing these WTF videos where we take uh, the craziest scene of whatever movie we reviewed that week, and we put that on TikTok, put that on Instagram. And like I said, we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, and we're on YouTube. We're everywhere. There's, there's no escaping us. Everywhere. Awesome. Okay, do you have any final words? Live long and prosper. For us, it's all TNTM, the show, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, Gmail, Hotmail, everything. Oh, me on TikTok, Pablo Gunner, and uh, talk nerdy to me.